All right, my name is uh, Lauren Wilson. This is my first ever vlog, and I'm just gonna start documenting my life, posting it to YouTube, and hopefully you guys can either derive some entertainment or some educational value from these topics that I talk about. So a little bit uh, uh, about my background. I was a distance runner growing up, so I ended up getting a track cross country scholarship to run at the University of Texas. Then I majored in exercise science at the University of Texas. I was a fitness trainer and a coach for 10 plus years, and I worked with a, the broad spectrum of the population, all the way from middle school athletes running track, cross country, and middle school basketball, all the way up to, to doing chair workouts with senior citizens and, and leading chair workouts for, for people with Parkinson's disease. And then everything in between those two, right? We have people trying to lose weight, trying to pe people trying to put on muscle, trying to get uh, just sports performance, more power, more speed, etc. Then, uh, just to keep the, the story short, I went back to school, got my master's degree in business administration from Texas State. I got the accounting classes, and I've passed all four parts of the the CPA exam, and just kind of awaiting that that CPA license, and. My main goal is I just want people to be as happy and as healthy and as abundant as as possible. And um, last thing on that is so right now I'm currently working at a CPA firm. I do uh, payroll, bookkeeping, tax, and business development consulting. And then I also work for a gym down in uh, Glendale or Phoenix area, Arrowhead area, called Physio. And it's sort of like an Orange Theory group fitness circuit, physical therapists in there as well. So really cool stuff going on. In addition to that, I uh, in Flagstaff, Arizona, that's where I live, 7,000 feet altitude. Um, I am in the Urban Hope Church School of Ministry. So uh, I in about two years, I will have my pastoral license and I will be able to, to teach theology uh, under that license, but I already do teach through the men's ministry program at Urban Hope Church. I relaunched it just because a lot of the statistics that I see out in the world, depending on, on where you read, 90 to 95% of men have no real friends. Like, they just have no friends. So loneliness epidemic. Also... 13 million women will go to church on any given Sunday. 13 million women will go without their husbands, or there will be 13 million more women on church any given Sunday than there is men. Other things are less than 10% of churches have an active men's ministry. Less than 1% of Christian men participate actively in an ongoing group. And I'm always one to, okay, that's cool, those are, those are stats, they're not inherently good or inherently bad, so what are the downstream effects? And the downstream effects are we have one in nine men between the working ages of 25 to 54 are completely out of the labor market compared to one in 50 back in the 1950s. And then also you have uh, just an increase in the amount of drug overdoses, you have the, an increase in the amount of alcoholism, people just getting addicted to different substances. And I truly believe that it, it, it really stems down to not having the proper God. And, uh, and, I, and as a Christian, I do believe in the Trinity. I do believe in the word of the Bible as truth. With that said, I'm, I'm never going to try to push it on you. We're all here seeking out truth. We're all here trying to seek out the way, uh, so to say, and, and answer two questions, which are, what are we doing here, and how do we go about living the best life possible? And, and sort of that's what religion and philosophy really comes down to. And when, when I see those stats and I see those problems, to me, it's an, it's an information organizational problem and a motivational problem. And, and what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is um, nobody wakes up in the morning and is like, man, really hope I'm anxious, really hope I'm depressed, really hope I'm out of shape, really hope I get angry today, really hope I'm bitter today, envy, jealous. 
And so what it is, is it's, it's an information. There's so many limitless choices on, on how to organize our day that you just have to pick the right choices, limit it down, and act on the right intuitions, and you just keep going and keep going and you persevere. And also you have the, the mental discipline and the mental tenacity to persevere. And, and usually that will come from a foundation of, of good health. Are you working out every day? Are you eating healthy? Are you hydrating properly? Are you feeding yourself good conversations and, and good social circle? Who are you surrounding yourself? What kind of conversations are you having? Because the conversations that you have, the words that you speak, that is what you value most and that is what you will end up walking out and that is what you will end up acting on. And so it's kind of a, a layout. Usually what I'm going to talk about, because I, I train for marathons, so I'll update you guys on just what's going on there. Uh, maybe tell some jokes. We'll see what comes up. And then probably talk a little bit about just what I'm reading, theology, any thoughts on my mind. Just, again, just get the consciousness out there. Let's get the thoughts out there. And I really feel that a calling for myself to get out there, because it's those stats that I just read about men. It's just like I can't even sleep at night properly knowing that if I didn't do something, if I didn't try to do something. So this is my attempt to make some sort of effort to just stand up and be all that God made me to be, my, my maximum potential to, to improve myself, to be the best version of myself, but then hopefully also just to, to help one other person. If we help one other person from this, they help one other person, and the cascade effects are all corners of the globe. And so what I'll do next is, uh, yeah, right now I'm training for the California International Marathon. It is in December in Sacramento. Last year when I did it, I can't remember what I ran. I ended up running like a three hour, 12 minutes. Uh, but I was on through 21 miles. I was on like a 235 pace. And then I really just bonked, hit the wall. Um, just a lot of stress over the last few years, just normal stuff. But I've, I've developed tools and equipping myself to, to handle that. A little bit better to repent let it go a little bit better also I was uh, not as disciplined as I should be in terms of doing dynamic drills and doing strength training doing core training keeping the frame of my body strong my my heart and my lungs my engine was really big from a lifetime of distance running but the frame the the mechanics my hip alignment, my spine alignment, all of that was just really out of, out of touch and it ended up just being the last 5k was was horrendous. So hopefully with uh, five and a half months, you can just stay disciplined. Right now, this summer, we'll just be working on, and when I say we, me and my best friend, who's also my roommate, Colby, uh, we will be just building up the mileage. So running, biking, any a lift to go, and then getting into the sauna, lifting weights, doing core work. I also like to boulder and, and top rope. So I'll also do that because it just really starts to strengthen the frame in a, in a really fun way. And it works on the mobility uh, in a really fun way as well. So that's kind of the, the training. Next, I am going to dive down into some, into some theology here. And so in my in my men's group in the in the bible study we're, we're about three weeks in now really the the thing that i want to talk about today is the the what is versus the what ought to be exercise and so right now the current state of yourself the current state of the world that is what is however there's a calling in every single human in every single culture, every single civilization, across the earth, across time, has this calling to be more. And so another way to put that is we have a calling inside of us of what we ought to be. And, and so that is kind of one of the big questions in philosophy and, and religion is we are what is, but what are we trying to be? What ought to be? And so one of the answers that we believe is, is the Holy Trinity. And, and, and it's not just important because a lot of times we just throw around these buzzwords that would go on a, on a bumper sticker or, or go on a t-shirt or something. It's like, be a godly man. It's like, well, 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 one, what does that mean? And then two, why should I do that? And, and, and really, you have to remember that 
all of us grew up in a school system that teaches a certain worldview and that teaches the scientific method, it teaches observation. So to be able to understand and to be able to grasp it, to say, oh, eternal life, it's like, okay, when you get into the realm of faith, we can talk about that a little bit, but not quite yet. It just gets a little bit more metaphysical and, and, and that's not as tangible. So it's like, how do we bring the conversations that we're having to a more tangible level to maximize our well-being while we're here on earth? And so, so what does it mean to strive or to ought to be a godly man? Well, what that means is when Jesus died on the cross... He gifted us with the Holy Spirit. And, and what the Holy Spirit does is it, allow, it puts a piece of the divine inside of us and it allows us to try to imitate Christ. And so how we ended up framing it in our group is all people were created in the image of God. But all of us are incomplete images of God or incomplete images of Christ or, or Jesus. And the reason that we're incomplete images of Christ is because of the fall, because Eve ate the apple and, and, and then we had the fall and then we had sin. And then we can't escape our sin until we die and have eternal life if you have faith in Jesus. But going back to that, we are incomplete images of Christ. And what we're trying to do is through our actions, through our behaviors and through our thoughts, we're trying to organize those, going back to the information organization problem. We're trying to organize the information, the intuitions or the streams of consciousness that go through our mind. We're trying to discern or decipher which ones are the Holy Spirit and which ones are of the flesh. And then we, after we know that, once we know the attributes of God and we know the attributes of Jesus, then we can decide to act or walk out those streams of consciousness that are Christ-like, that are from the Holy Spirit. And then when you start to move the earthly kingdom towards God's heavenly kingdom on earth. And so well, what does it mean to, to be godly? And um, I don't have the, the, the scripture here in front of me, but what it is, what the downstream results are, what the downstream consequences or benefits are is, is from Galatians 5.22, the fruits of the Spirit. And so I'll actually go ahead and pull out my Bible right now and, and read the fruits of the Spirit here. Because that's the thing, right? It's like, if I do something, the reason that I'm doing it is because I believe, or at least rationally, I believe that I'm doing this thing because out of every possible thing that I could be doing right now, this is going to yield the greatest benefit. That would make sense rationally. We know that that's not true because we live in an irrational uh, world and we live in a fallen world. So that's another way to kind of view it, either through a more um, academic or a more theological um, viewpoint here. And I apologize, this is taking so long to, to find my Galatians. Here we go. Um, but right, it's like my action should yield well-being and then in in another parameter or another variable in that is what maximizes my well-being over the longest period of time and so that's what we we really start to degrade our quality of life and when we give into temptation and we give into sin that's what it is 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 we're so caught up in the temptation of the moment the pleasure of the moment and when we do it Let's be honest, it feels freaking good. It feels awesome to engage in, in sexual acts. It feels awesome to do drugs. It feels awesome to just like, to just sin, right? Uh, a lot of times. Other sins, not so much, like uh, anger, bitterness, jealousy, pride, not so much. But for the most part, it's like some of these sinful activities feel great. And... And then it's the recovery, it's the rebound, it's when we give in to lust, it's, it's the rebound from it, it's like, whoa, don't feel as good. But if we're able to make the proper sacrifices and delay gratification, that 
and, and persevere in that value, in that ethic of delaying gratification and perseverance, that maximizes our well-being over the longest period of, of time. And so, all right, here we go. So Galatians 5.22. So if I am trying to be Christ-like, I'm trying to embody the attributes of Christ, it's going to lead to the fruits of the Spirit. And it says Galatians 5.22, and this is an ESV study Bible. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. And so, right, those, those sound like very good outcomes. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. And so by acting like Christ, I'm maximizing my well-being. And what does that mean? Well, I'm maximizing the fruits of the Spirit over the longest time span that I possibly can in this, in this fleshly body. So what is, what ought to be, and the medium to do that through a Christian perspective is the Holy Spirit. And then, right, other worldviews would also say, okay, let's maximize Let's maximize well-being, and then that's going to be just value systems and, 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 and acting on that. And so, after that, the, the, the other thing that I like to talk about in, in terms of the context of maximizing well-being is a lot of times we just don't know how to set goals. If you grew up playing sports, you're very used to the concept of periodization. So in the off season, I'm working on different skill sets. I'm working on conditioning, but I'm not trying to be in my peak performance because I can only hold the peak performance for so long. And so it's a build and it's a ramp up for the playoffs, for the championship season. And then once your season's over, you deload, you, you, you evaluate what went well, what didn't go well, how are we going to get better for the next season, right? So a life is a series of seasons. Every season is a little bit different. We're trying to, to work on different skills. And so it's good to have a framework, a holistic wellness framework of how am I going about maximizing myself so that I can measure my progress? Because if you don't measure it, it doesn't matter. And then you're not really going to know. You're going to be going off of gut. You're going to be going off of intuition. So one of the, the, the models that I like is, is let's set physical goals. Let's set mental goals. Let's set emotional goals. Let's set spiritual goals. Let's develop our intuition or our ability to, to detect different types of spirits and energy and read body language in the world and, and to also discern what may happen in the future and then financial goals as well and then holding that all together so if that's a circle and you're holding it all together in the middle is your value system and your highest value system that's in the middle and it imbues and encompasses all of it because your value system is what guides your decision making. And so from the Christian perspective, that theological perspective, we're having God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit in the middle. And all of his attributes that we believe permeate the rest of the holistic wellness wheel. And so what you do is I'm going to set lifetime goals. What do I want to do before I die? And then I'm going to work backwards. 20-year goals, 10-year goals, five-year goals, one-year goals, one uh, a twelve week goals, a quarter right, uh, one month goals, one week goals, daily goals. Am I executing? And then one of the best tools that that I've seen is Andy Frisella's of, of First Form, Andy Real as Fuck podcast, badass podcast. Definitely recommend uh, listening to it. What he does is the powerless. So what are the five most important things that I need to accomplish today to move towards my goals? If I do that, that's a W. If I don't accomplish those five things, that's an L. And so now you start to track progress and you can look back over time and be honest with yourself. Did I win each day? And if you execute and you win each day, 
given enough time, eventually you will get the fruits of the Spirit because you're laying those seeds, you're sowing those seeds, and you reap what you sow eventually. But it does take time. It takes tremendous amounts of sacrifice. It takes tremendous amounts of perseverance. It takes tremendous amounts of hard work, and it takes tremendous amounts of faith. And, and I feel like our culture just sells this get rich quick and this immediate pleasure and we realize how hollow that is and, and, and also just how unrealistic it is. And we're teaching young kids and they get so down on themselves and, and the mental depression does, does not lie. The, the, the anxiety and depression rates and the suicide rates have never been higher even though we've never been more materially abundant, we've never been more spiritually deprived. And so you just need to be honest, like, hey, life is hard, especially if you're a man. It is very hard to bear as much responsibility as you possibly can. It is very hard to, to, to work out and be strong physically, to be strong mentally, to be strong spiritually. It is hard to be a good friend. It is hard to be a, a, a leader in every single arena that you have to, to take place in. And at the same time, it, we live in an era where the respect for men just continues to go down. And then you wonder why the, the mental state and you wonder why the school shootings are, are through the roof and it's and it's so obvious that we're just telling men the wrong message what we need to be telling them is you are built to be to to handle suffering you are built to work and you are built to handle stress and you are built to, to bear as much responsibility as you possibly can and you don't need to do it alone you do it with other men you don't isolate yourself. We always were existed in tribes until very recently. So you need to find that strong group of men that you can lean on to help you get through the hard times because there's going to be a lot of those hard times. And then also, you need to believe in something greater than yourself. If you don't want to call that God, you better call it something that is going to provide a foundation so when the wheels fall out underneath you, that's what you fall to, is you fall to your face. When shit hits the fan, when, when someone tells you you're a piece of shit, when your company gets sued, when your girlfriend tells you you're a piece of shit, or your wife tells you you're a piece of shit, or your kid tells you you're a piece of shit, or you're, again, your employees quit, you have culture problems, it is your faith that you fall to, and it's your faith that is going to make sure you don't lose this, your faith and your perseverance and your work ethic. And, and then you're going to persevere, and you're going to come out the other side better and stronger than you ever were. And that is the central story, symbolically and metaphorically, of the Christian Bible and of the resurrection, right? We're continually sacrificing who we are for who we could be. We're continually crucifying who we are and resurrecting or renewing ourselves to be a better version of ourselves. And, and, and on that cross, what that symbol represents, besides the, the, the cross itself, the symbol of love God, the two greatest commandments, love God with all your mind, all your strength, and all your heart, and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's what Jesus says is, are the two greatest commandments. What it also represents is the point of maximum suffering. And can you bear as much suffering as possible? And then when you kill your current self, which is what you do when you work, you're literally sacrificing who you are to become who you could be. That's what work is. I'm expending energy, giving up who I am to become who I could be. So I'm, I'm sacrificing myself and resurrecting as a new person. And so it's such a great, such a great method. And, and, and a priori to that, and, and what I feel one of, the, one of the problems in society right now with men is a priori. You have to believe in two things. One, you have to believe in free will, and you ha which put another way is you have to believe in personal authority and you have to believe in personal responsibility. If you do not believe that you have control over this, internal locus of control over this, if you believe the external environment affects your quality of life, then you cannot persevere in this world. And that is the a priority for all religions is that we have control over our thoughts, over our actions, and over our behaviors, and we are imperfect, and we are striving to be more. 
And, and if you do not believe that, your life will be a dumpster fire. You have to believe a priori that you have personal responsibility and you have personal authority over everything in your life. Everything good that happens in your life, that's because of you. Everything bad that happens in your life, it's because of you. If your girlfriend told you a piece of crap, that's your fault. If your employees quit, it's your responsibility to figure it out. And, and that is a part of being a man. And it's not something to run away from. It's not something to, to cower from or become a coward. It is something to be, to be grateful for and feel blessed that God has chosen you to bear as much responsibility as you can because that gives you hope, that gives you meaning, and that gives you purpose, and that is what sustains you, and that is what makes your life high quality at the end of the day. And so one of the things is, again, going back to the organization problem, what sin actually means in archery is it means to miss the mark. And so, again, if we use our actions, our thoughts, and our behaviors, and we're trying to direct them, and we're trying to aim them at being like Christ, to sin is to miss the mark. And I feel like that is a very just cool concept in general. And then lastly, I will, I will say that choose your heart, right? There's two types of hard in this world. You can choose to stay where you're at. You can choose to, to, to be a little gluttonous. You can choose to, to get on Netflix. And you know the end result of that already. Maybe you're a little bit comfortable, but on the inside, you feel hollow. On the inside, you feel empty. Because you know that you were built for so much more, and God is upset with you. God is weeping because you are not stepping in to being the man that you possibly could be, that God designed you to be. And that is a certain type of hard right there. Just knowing when you look in the mirror that you are not just proud of yourself. Not pride in terms of, of, of the ego, of, of the sinly proud, but just looking in the mirror and saying, man, you fucking gave it everything you had today so you can sleep comfortably with a clear conscience because you did everything you possibly could. And then the other side of that, right, is, is the toil, is the work, is the perseverance, is the hard, is putting yourself in hard situations through work. That at least gives you an opportunity to reap the fruits of the Spirit. So you can choose to stay where you are and you can suffer where you are because suffering you know, is, a, is just a human condition. No matter what religion you believe in, no matter what worldview you have, suffering is a part of the human condition. So you can choose to sit and weep and sorrow in, in your suffering, or you can choose to work and at least provide a small antidote to your suffering. So choose your heart. Only one has the possibility of, of the fruits, and only one will give you that clear conscience of, I am doing everything I fucking can to be all that God created me to be. And so this is my challenge to all of us. How long can you go? What kind of streak can you put together of, of being all that you possibly can be? Set big, hairy, audacious goals. Set goals so big that they scare you, that they make you shit your pants, that everyone looks at you and they think you're fucking crazy because you are. Because you know what normal is? Do you want to know what normal is? Normal is obese. Normal is anxious. Normal is depressed. Normal is living paycheck to paycheck. Normal is a dumpster fire. Normal is 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 literally insulting to God. That is what it is. So choose to be abnormal. Choose to be in crazy because that those are the only people that genuinely love themselves and genuinely change the world. I'm Lauren Wilson and thank you for listening to my vlog.